Hello all, this is uh, Bunning Says, and we're here to continue uh, where we left off with Cinderella Phenomenon. This is part two. Um, oh, I missed the music. <laughs> it's really strange. It's, you know, it, it's really pretty music. You really need to check it out. So, I'm in a very mellow mood. Let's, uh, in a thoughtful mood. So, Let's continue on with the story before my voice uh, throws out. <laughs> okay. Uh, last we left off. Um, where did we leave la last to leave off? Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, we went to a toy shop. Uh, Lucette last uh, left the palace after for the first time in four years. Well, that's a long time. <laughs> right. So, um, we'll see what's going on, and, yeah, and I noticed that this train here in the, uh, there's a train up in the, uh, it looks like a train, I mean, up in the left-hand corner, and I keep wondering if there's, um, well, I mean, obviously if it's a train, then they have trains, so, but then again, they have music. Uh, not music, uh, magic, so, you know, why not trains, so, okay, well, let's get into the story, we know Lucette is very unhappy about going out, her mother warned her about it, and her father sort of forced her to uh, go out with her stepsister and stepbrother, and she was not very happy about that. So, okay, there's a girl in the shop. I'm assuming, again, she's the <laughs> shopkeeper. And, uh, hello, how can I help? Emmeline. Uh, Viorica. Emmeline, I mean, Princess Emmeline. How good to see you. I trail Emmeline, ignoring her as she embraces her friend. I glance around the small shop. The dolls displayed are nowhere near the quality of the ones in my room. I cannot understand why Emily insisted she buy gifts for her friends here. Well, maybe she's trying to help her friend out and, you know, just uh, support her and, you know, make some purchases. I cannot believe I am outside the palace. Oh, that's right, Fritz here. Is, Fritz is here as well. So, Fritz is here. He's a he's a Lucette's bodyguard. So obviously, he needs to be here. Um, Fritz, there's no need to be so tense, Princess. I would never let anything happen to you. Your only job is to relax and enjoy yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you asked the impossible of me. <laughs> Emmeline, there's no need to be, for, be uh, formal Viorica. I'm st still the same as I was. Oh yes, Rod's, Rod's come along as well. Oh, there's Rod. There's his little weird plaid bunny on his shoulder. It's been a while, Viorica. Oh, okay, so, well, he's, he'll speak to Viorica. He won't speak to uh, Lucette, though. It's good to see you two again, Rod. Uh, you again, too, Rod. And I must introduce to you Her Highness, the Crown Princess Lucette. Hmm, Viorica doesn't look too happy about that. The look on Viorica's face as she takes a step back from me is all too familiar. My, ap my apologies for being so rude, Your Highness. Good morning. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Let's, oh, never mind. Uh, and this is Sir Fitzgerald, uh, Sir Alcaster's son. 
It is a pleasure pleasure to meet you, my lady. Oh, yes, sir, sir Fitzgerald. You really are as handsome as Emmeline described in her letters. I'm sorry? Uh, Emmeline, <laughs> Emmeline looks a little embarrassed there. Or maybe she has a little crush on Fitzgerald. I don't, I don't know. But it's also nice to know that um, she's writing letters to her friends, so she keeps in, keeps in touch with her. That's a that's a nice thing to do, you know. Um, Emmeline, please don't mind her, Sir Fitzgerald. I'm sorry, Emmeline. <laughs> All right. Uh. So, um, what brings you all the way here? Emmeline. Oh, I'm here to get some toys. Gifts for some new friends. Toys from here? Are you sure? Of course I am. I cross my arms. I would prefer we finish this errand as quickly as possible. Yes, of, co of course. I'm sorry, Your Highness. Why, it looks pretty upset. Fritz. Princess. I can barely breathe in here. I just want to go back to the palace. Oh. Okay. Okay, there's a um, picture of a very... Oh, yeah. A very uh, pretty, beautiful woman with long red hair and really piercing green eyes. And uh, a really great uh, green shawl with uh, these really rose designs on it that look really pretty. So, good morning. Up until this point, I had always considered Mother to be the fairest beauty in the land. The lady that walks in proves me wrong. Her beauty is mesmerizing, and clearly without peer. Everyone in the shop is openly staring. Ah, Viorica. Oh, you're early today, ma'am. I have some important errands to run later today. Are the items ready now? Oh, of course. Let me go and fetch them for you. I'll be just one moment, Emily. Who said? Why is she smiling at me? Oh, so maybe the beautiful lady knows Lucette. So, okay. Here we go. Hey, well, ma'am. Thank you. No. Oh. She just left. I expected her to say something to Lucette. Uh, Emmeline. Ah, oh, that lady was beautiful. Why? Any girl standing next to her becomes hopelessly ugly by comparison. Who is she? Fiorga. She's new around town. Some say that she's a fairy. A fairy? Fairy said... Uh, had saved Angel from the witches four years ago. Everyone considered them to our saviors. And yet the fairies are still unable to stop the fairy tale curse from spreading. Here you go. Thank you so much. No, thank you, Bjorga. I hope to drop by again soon. Good. I look forward to seeing you again. I hope to see you again as soon as well, Rod. Likewise. Lucette, leaving the palace was a bad idea. While I am out, I am the center of attention. 
Some townsfolk point at me, point and stare at me. Most, however, make a point of avoiding me. Like I am the plague. There are some spiteful stares, but thankfully, none are nearly as intense as they, as they were four years ago. Emmeline, I'm sure the townsfolk are only surprised to see you again after so many years. Right. Fritz and Rod lag behind us, which leaves only Emmeline walking beside me. I cannot decide which is worse. The steering or our company. Oh, come on. She's, she's really nice. I was said, look, a street performance. It's been so long since I last watched one. Street performance. Oh, okay. Some boy with uh, very red eyes. <laughs> okay. Good day, everyone. My name is Waltz, and I'm here to spread some happiness and magic. That's nice. The boy named Waltz snaps his fingers, and then colorful flower petals start to rain down from the sky. Oh, pretty good. Isn't that pretty, Lucette? Now, yeah, Waltz is here. Okay. Are those the princesses over there? It is an honor to have you in attendance. Please accept this humble gift. He snaps his fingers and white lilies appear in his hand. Oh, okay. Pretty lily. Emmeline. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this it's not having, having any of it. Uh, the boy looks at me as if expecting some kind of reaction. When he gets nothing from me, he sighs and gives me a wry smile. I hope to see you again during my next show. Emmeline, we'll definitely try. He gracefully bows before moving back into his area to perform more magic tricks for a gathering crowd. Emmeline, there are performers like this all around in Gale. I love them. Maybe someday we'll get to see some musicians, too. Those are my favorite. I do not intend to leave the palace again. What, at all? Ever? But... You don't like it out here? Rod and I grew up here. I love Ange I love Angel, and this is my favorite part of the kingdom. I wanted to share this with you, Lucette. I know you didn't really want to come, but you still tagged along. That means a lot to me, so thank you. I did not do this for you. I am only here because I am only here because the king ordered me to go with you. Oh, that's so rude. I mean, she's trying to be nice to her, and uh, Emmeline. Mm. Okay. I just want us to be close to Lucette. I would like to try and be your friend. I do not want to need your friendship. Mm. No matter how you act around me, we are not and never will be sisters. I'd take care to remember that if I were you. Oh, okay, wow, well, that was that was again very cold. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't have the feeling that Emmeline is, like, has some kind of ul ulterior motive, like she's trying to steal her crown ship or something or whatever, but anyway, but I, oh, okay, Rod steps in here. Rod suddenly grabs my hand, pulling me away from Emmeline. Stop. He's staring daggers at me. I think this is the first time I've ever seen him angry. Rod, don't. Let me go. Both of you ought to stay away from me. I feel the heavy atmosphere as I turn to look at people staring at us. 
Oh yeah, that's right, they're out in public. Uh, their expression, expressions mirror the look of, looks of disdain I saw years ago. Anger, disgust, hatred. I begin to walk away. Fritz, Princess, wait. Don't follow me. Princess. I adjust my cloak, making sure my face is hidden from view. Oh, that looks like a really expensive cloak. Uh, <laughs> it's like Vermeian or something. <laughs> I don't think she's going to be mistaken for the common peasant there, but... I never should have left the palace. As I walk around, I watch the people bumbling down the streets. So carefree. They work so hard for so little reward. They go work their entire lives and never have a fraction of what I have. And yet, they are happy. And I, woman A, there's some woman here now, redhead, some redheaded woman. Uh, I heard a niece lost her job at the palace. Uh, woman B, it's true. Crown Princess Lucette made it, made sure the poor girl was fired. I stop in the tracks at the mention of my name. Not again. Anise? Was that the name of the one maid that tore Dolores' dress? If so, my decision to fire her was justified. A palace maid cannot be clumsy. Why should I tolerate poor, poor performance? What did I do that was so wrong? I know that Denise, this woman B, hard working and big hearted, and very good with medicine. Shame she lost her job so quickly. You know how, how hard the crown princess is to please. My friend at the palace says she doesn't even smile only goes around with that cold look on her face. That's probably why they call her the Ice Prince <coughs> the Ice Princess. Yeah, okay. Ice Princess. So all those times I heard the servant saying that I'd always suspected they were talking about me. She's the complete opposite of our Princess Emmeline. That child's an angel. We all know she should be, be crown princess. Annoyance begins to simmer inside me. I cannot stand hearing anymore, so I walk away. Hmm, that's not good. She's, you know, all the even the townspeople don't like her. They don't, they don't like her so much they'd rather have the other girl as princess. That's like a bad position for her. Okay, uh, ever since Emmeline entered my life, I am always being compared to her. And now I have become second best. I am Lucette Viola Breton, daughter of King Gennaro Breton III, and the, crown, and the crown princess of the kingdom of Angel. I am of royal blood. She is, she is nothing. Fritz. There you are. Princess, you must come back with me. It is getting late for you to be to remain outside. Princess? Are you alright? Are you hurt? I brush him off and turn away. No need to fuss. Let us return to the palace. Okay, we're back at the palace where we're in uh, Lucette's uh, bedroom. Leaving the palace was physically and mentally draining. My bed is welcoming to my unusually heavy body. I turn my head and meet Dolores' glassy gaze from where she sits on my shelf. Oh, 
this tomorrow, so tomorrow. Yeah, I'm gonna say, I left the palace today tomorrow. It was the same as all those years ago. Everyone looked at me like I was. What I what have I ever done to to deserve those looks? How could I be so hated? You know, actually, you know, people the people do hate her a lot. I mean, she may be cold and sort of demeaning, but I yeah, okay. Well, whatever. Okay, Ice Princess. I wish Mother was here. I look at the smiling faces of my, of my dolls. At least I still have all of you. I yawn and stretch my arms. Good night, Dolora. Okay. Uh, all right. Is a uh, a voice. Uh, twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. Lucette, singing, but who? Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Oh, yeah, you, oh yeah, this is bad. There's Delora. She's. Oh, that looks like she's talking. <laughs> okay. I blink my eyes open, only to see Delora sitting right in front of me on the bed. On my bed. Moonlight spills across her delicate features. How I wonder what you are. Wasn't she on a shelf with all the other dolls when I went to bed? De Delora? Delora. It's almost time. I pinch my cheeks to make sure I am not dreaming. It hurts. Delora. Only ten minutes before the clock strikes twelve. Oh. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, Delora just turned into a... A woman. A, a full human uh, person. <laughs> Delora. I hope you're ready, Princess. What? My doll just turned into a human. How? Who are you? You know who I am. I've been watching you since the day since the day after your father since the day your father gave me to you. What is happening? I don't think I have ever, ever been so confused in my life. All the answers will come with time, but right now, I am here to give you something, Princess. Oh. What the hell was that? A, a, a glass slipper? Is this Cinderella's very, own, Cinderella's very own glass slipper? It is beautiful. Too beautiful. Then a realization begins to dawn upon me. You're a witch. Smart girl. I knew you'd figure that out eventually. Now it's time to say goodbye to your precious crown. Oh, whoa, okay, whoa. She's gonna do something evil here. What? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that doll, yeah. That doll was up to no good, I knew that. Delora, sweet dreams. Cinderella. C oh, okay. Cinderella phenomenon. There's a splash screen. And oh, okay. Well, that uh, wow. Was that that was all? Oh, that was the prologue. Is that what was going on? So, okay. Um, well, let's continue on for a little bit. Um, uh, some woman. Hey. Wake up, girl. Lucette. Oh, she's back in her peasant clothes. Yeah, this the clothes she was wearing at the very beginning of the story, you know. Huh? Where, where am I? Oh, my head. Woman. You have some nerve sleeping in front of my shop. 
Leave before a customer sees you. I was in my room. How am I here? Do you not, do you not hear what I said, you filthy child? Filthy? You would speak to your crown princess in such a manner? If you are the crown princess, then I'm the queen. You must have been knocked on the head quite hard to have such grand delusions. I am not delusional. I am Lucette Riella Baton, blood daughter of King Gennaro Baton III, and the crown princess of Angel. Right. The king never had a daughter with that witch. What? Is she referring to mother? Witch? Don't pretend to be stupid, girl. I can, I can only stare at her, puzzled. Our good king has only stepchildren. Princess Evelyn and Prince Rod. And you are most definitely neither of them. What? Now get gone before you go spouting your crazy gibberish at my customers and scare them away. With a huff, she leads me to my own rapidly turning thoughts. I quickly realize I am, that I am wearing tattered clothes and that I do not even have shoes on. No, no, no. This cannot be happening. Something shines against my chest and I reach up to grab it. Oh, okay. That was a necklace with a... Oh. A gla little glass slipper on it. This is... It all floods back. Delora being a witch. Signorella's glass slipper. This is not a dream. Delora gave me the fairy tale curse. My hands begin to tremble. I must return to the palace to speak with the king. Okay, now we're at the gates of the palace, I guess. So, uh, let me in. Night. Sorry, girl, but this place is off limits to an uninvited guest. You do not understand. I am Crown Princess Lucette Riella Breton. I must speak with my father. As low as low as I am to call him that, I have to. No one will believe me if I am addressing him by title. Night B. You best to leave now, nice and quiet, before we have to force you. If you would only. Night C. Make way for the king. The gates swing open, and three horses stride out. Soldiers ride two of the horses, while the last horse has a different, familiar rider. Father! I immediately move to block the path of his horse. The soldiers move to hold me back. Your Majesty! Yep, it's King Gennaro. What is this? Your Majesty, this girl is claiming to be your daughter. Daughter? Both of my stepchildren stepchildren are in the palace right now. What? Even, a f even father is part of this? Father, you must help me. A witch has cursed me. For once in your life, just once, help me. You must believe me. Tell me, where is your family, child? Why are you here all alone? He looks at me with pity in his eyes. He is looking at me more kindly as a peasant than he ever did when I was the crown princess and his daughter. I recoil. You must be hungry. Take this. <coughs> Excuse me. Ah, uh, look like a little pouch of some sort. This should feed you and your family for a day or two. 
The Kingdom offers work opportunities to those who need them. Please let your parents know. I do not want your pity. Father! Please escort this girl back to her home. Make sure she gets there safely. At once, Your Majesty. I watch as my father and his two guards ride away on the horses, leaving me to stand in their dust. He left me alone. Again. Where's your home girl? There's nowhere left for me to go. Father has forgotten me. Leave me. Now look here. Our orders were to leave me alone. Suit yourself. Can't say we didn't try. Don't cause any more scenes, little girl. <coughs> I watch with ble bleary eyes as the soldiers return to the palace. How can this be happening? I stare at the small pouch in my hands. I do not know what hurts more. The fact that I have just been unceremoniously paraded away from my home like I am nothing more than a piece of garbage. Or the fact that my own father does not recognize me. Oh, okay, there's two women. Uh, noble woman A. Oh, look at that girl's hideous dress. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> she walked up and said, you know. <laughs> oh my god, that girl is so ugly. Look at her dress. <laughs> it's hideous. <laughs> what is she doing here on the streets? <clears throat> okay, anyway. Noble woman, hey, oh, look at that girl's hideous dress. How difficult it is to be poor. Yeah, you, should have, you should have some more sympathy for that. You can stop calling the hideous. Uh, okay. I clutch the, po the pouch closer to my chest as I run to an empty alley. I huddle in a corner trying to become as small as possible. I squeeze my eyes shut, hoping that when I next open them, everything will be back to normal. A dream? Okay, we're having a flashback, I guess, when she was little, so. Mother, her, her mother is speaking. No matter what happens, you must not leave the palace. Young, young who said, why? The world is cruel. People will only ever hurt you. <clears throat> but they are, they are always so nice to me. That is only because you are the crown princess. They will only ever think of what they can take from you. I am trying to protect you, my love. That is why you must never ever leave the palace. Never leave mother. I am the only one who will ever love you so much. Do you understand? I understand. Okay, well, okay, uh, chapter one, the Mashen. Uh, okay, the, oh, okay, we're back at, uh, okay, we're, oh, we're, we're back at the beginning, beginning of the story, I guess, when he sits here with her passing clothes and stuff, and so, okay, this is a good time to, uh, close this file out, it's a little getting a little long. And uh, um, I want to. I I'm going to do another um, version of this. So I'm really interested. I, I that this is really great. I'm really enjoying this. So I want to see what happens. So okay, um, let me close this out. And uh, I hope you're enjoying it. And uh, you know, uh, hope you listen to the next uh, next episode. So. I'll see you in a bit.